Oil Nut Bay body is identified as Howard Walker. Children ages 5 through 11 can now take the vaccine. Two new homes are gifted under the Housing Assistance Program. USVI Senator Sarau to headline BVI Women's Day event. Harmony Messiah says COVID highlights the NCD impact. All these and more when 284 returns. There's a reason you get up on a morning. A reason you pick yourself up, start the day. Maybe it's sheer grit. Maybe it's your ethics. Maybe it's because you know people like you are waiting. For people just like you. We all have our reasons. And for Republic Bank, that reason is you. Every little thing. Every big thing. It's all about making a difference in your life. Because after 182 years, if it's one thing we're sure about, is that the difference is you. We're here to help. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. Welcome viewers, I'm Nia Douglas coming to you live from the beautiful British Virgin Islands. It's Tuesday, February 22nd, and I'd like to thank you for tuning in to 284 News tonight. Starting off today's news, police have officially released the name of the deceased whose body was found on the rocks close to the shoreline at Oil Nut Bay. The body of Jamaican national Howard Walker, 53, a maintenance worker and landscaper at Oil Nut Bay, was met lying on nearby rocks a few feet away from the bay. Initial reports indicated that Walker ended his day on Saturday around 4.30 p.m. and went fishing on the other side of the island. Employees of the resort became concerned when he did not show up to work the next morning and could not be reached by phone. One employee search of the area uncovered the body lying on the rocks and unreachable by land. Virgin Islands search and rescue personnel retrieved the body. Fishing gear along with a bucket of fish were found in the area. He was pronounced dead at around noon. The Royal Virgin Islands Police Force says that investigations are ongoing in the matter. In other news, the British Virgin Islands has been supplied with some additional 3,510 doses of the Pfizer vaccine, along with the first batch of 500 pediatric vaccines for children ages 5 to 11, thanks to the United Kingdom government. During a recent press conference, His Excellency Governor John Rankin said that while the vaccines are for persons who require boosters as well as first and second doses, the pediatric shots will only be valid for a small time frame for use. I'm pleased that last Wednesday on the 16th of February, a further 3,510 Pfizer doses were delivered to the territory, together with our first 500 pediatric doses for children aged 5 to 11. Pfizer is a vaccine which is now uh, coming to the territory and which is used for, for both boosters and for those requiring their first or second uh, vaccinations. We've now had over 17,000 people have received double doses of vaccination. Almost 19,000 have received a, a single dose, but We've got to get that rate continued to go up because that's the best way of protecting yourself and the best way of protecting your loved ones, the best protection against serious illness or death. So I continue to, to join you, Minister, in the message of uh, don't procrastinate, uh, vaccinate. And as regards the paediatric doses for, for 5 to 11-year-olds, one message I wanted to give today is that those doses have a lifespan of 10 weeks. They need to be used within the 10-week period since they were delivered to the Territory last week. So I would urge those who do want their, their younger children to be vaccinated uh, to come forward now to get that first uh, vaccination. Minister for Health and Social Development, Honourable Carbon Malone, continued his advocacy campaign to encourage more residents to utilise the available vaccines. He said to date, it is still the only scientifically proven method to combat the COVID-19 virus. For those areas that have had the high level of vaccinations, we were able to reduce the hospitalization 
able to reduce debts, and so too in the Virgin Islands. We now see that we are down to 69 active cases. We see that um, in terms of what we have, a hospitalization for persons, we see that our vaccination rate is now 63.1%, 17,235, and those with only a single dose is 1,598. We also see that our healthcare system began to you know, continue to perform admirably in terms of the vaccinations, in terms of the, um, in terms of the laboratories. It is a strain on them because they themselves subject themselves to all of this virus in a step to make us all safe. So the United Kingdom has performed well in terms of um, supplying all of the vaccines that are required in the Virgin Islands. They have done so with the AstraZeneca, and now they will do so with the Pfizer. So we are grateful for the 3,510 doses that were now received, the 500 pediatric doses that we've received. We know that with the 10 weeks of shelf life, so to speak, that it is critical that parents do the right thing. It is critical that parents protect their loved ones, their little toddlers, 5 to 11. Meanwhile, Minister Malone also indicated that the Health Emergency Operations Center will be meeting with the Cabinet of the Virgin Islands soon to discuss the possibility of further relaxing COVID measures in the territory. The HEOC will give Cabinet a number of um, circumstances under which we can continue to relax the protocols that we have. In fact, we have relaxed most of them. The common sense of wearing masks is still um, being observed, and we want to continue this until we see exactly where we go. We know that we're coming into a season of um, Easter festival activities, into the uh, festivals, and we will be monitoring this because come 1st of March, I am sure that we would be able to look at whatever remaining protocols that we have. And, you know, because we have learned to live with this and we have to be just careful. So our word to you is quite simple. We are not out of the woods. We have to be vigilant. We have to be careful. We have to be the keepers of our golden gyms, keepers of our um, small kids, 5 to 11. From 12 onwards, we know that they are available. The minister also said that at present, he is not satisfied with the current rate that the booster shots are being administered in the territory. He therefore encouraged more persons to come forward to receive the booster shot. Now viewers, just to remind you of the current COVID-19 stats in the territory, active COVID-19 cases in the British Virgin Islands continues to gradually decline with cases now down to 63. This is according to an epidemiological summary dated Monday, February 21st, which said that the BVI recorded 24 new cases and 30 recoveries on Sunday, February 20th. Of the now active 63 cases, 49 are on Tartola, 10 on Virgin Gorda, and 2 apiece on Anagata and Jos van Dijk, respectively. This will now mean that local cases are down to 22 and contacts of cases down to 10, while cases detected during travel screening total 31. The summary states that there are presently three persons hospitalized for COVID-19. The total number of COVID-related deaths in the BVI stands at 62. Up next, the government's Housing Recovery Assistance Program has handed over two new homes. This story and more after a quick word from our sponsors. Is business slow? Cash flow down? Hosting an upcoming event? We can help. Advertise with 284 Media and take your business or event to the next level by enhancing your present marketing and messaging strategies. Allow our team of experts to create a personalized ad that sets your business apart from all the rest. This could be your business or event. So, what are you waiting for? Contact our marketing team at 284media at cctbvi.com. Advertising with us works. Live stream cable TV is here with CCT Live. Access over 80 channels. 
that you can watch either at home or when you're on the go. And don't worry about missing your favorite series, sports, news, and local programming. Rewind and watch in your own time. Come to CCT today and ask about our one month free trial offer. CCT Live, bring it home. Brilliant Hands and Minds Tutoring Services, one-on-one -on -one tutorials in math and English, intense homework assistance, academic enrichment, school projects, effective communication and public speaking development, sign language for adults and children on Saturdays only. Registered with the Virgin Islands High School Certificate Program, Brilliant Hands and Minds can help you too. Offering intense curriculum-based training to help you or your loved ones get their high school diploma. It's time to make your family's education a number one priority. Hurry, space is limited. Brilliant Hands and Minds Learning Center. We are the trained education professionals. The wait is over. CCT Fire is here. Experience ultra-fast downloads, seamless streaming, and even more reliable connectivity on an all-new fire-blazing, super-fast CCT Fire Network. CCT Fire, bring it home and upgrade today. Welcome back, viewers. A government release reports that two families have recently received new homes. The homes were built under the Ministry of Health and Social Development's Housing Recovery Assistance Program. The ministry says that recipients Steve Stephen Smith sorry, and Naomi Springett received the keys to their newly built homes on Friday, February 18th. The release quotes the Minister for Health and Social Development, Honorable Carbon Malone, stating that the minister is happy that he was able to give the recipients the keys to their homes so that their lives could return to some semblance of normalcy. It is a great feeling to help persons who are in need. It makes me feel good to know that the program is accomplishing its mission and bringing smiles to the hearts of those who are really in need, Honorable Malone said. Mr. Smith's home was constructed by KAT Building Group, while Ms. Springett's home was constructed by Quality Construction. The ministry says that the new homeowners were happy and appreciative to the government of the Virgin Islands and expressed those sentiments during a brief handover ceremony. Fifteen families have benefited from the Housing Recovery Assistance Program that was created in the aftermath of the 2017 catastrophic hurricanes to assist homeowners to repair and rebuild their homes. In other news, International Women's Day will once again be observed this year. All across the world, women join in solidarity of each other's contributions worldwide. Our Ron Grant sat down with Cindy Roseanne on an exciting event coming up, honoring women in the Virgin Islands with an A-list lineup of speakers. But first, she spoke on the International Observation of Women's Day. Take a look. International Women's Day is a movement that fights for equality of any type of rights um, for women. Um, in 1975, the UN celebrated its first official International Women's Day on the 8th of March. And if we look at two years later, the General Assembly adopted a resolution proclaiming it a United Nations Day for women across the world. So International Women's Day first emerged from the activities of labor movements at the turn of the 20th century across North America and Europe. Um, and so the first International Day was observed in the United States on February 28, 1999. So if we see, Ron, uh, this is a long um, time movement um, in a fight that women have been pursuing and keeping active um, to fight for equality for women across the world. Um, locally, it's important for us as well as we are part of that. Um, you know, our, I always say our society is very patriarchal. Uh, and so there's still a lot of work at home to be done in terms of uh, women equality and so forth. Mr. Roseanne, Mrs. Roseanne, sorry, also spoke to the selection process for the guest speakers and what patrons can expect. At the end of the day, um, no one knows you like you, right, Ron? Uh, if there is not someone of your likeness to fight for the rights of you or that thing or that position, then it's never really addressed, um, if you understand what I'm saying when I say that. So we definitely need women who will fight for those rights of women and who just bring a different view to the table. Um, 
for International Women's Day for the BVI, for my company, we're doing an International Day dinner, uh, which this is the second year we're doing it. And I have invited um, the Senator, Senator Janelle Siro, to be the guest speaker for this year. Um, I have been watching and admiring her for a while, and she's strong in her position and her stance. And one of the things I find that we have in common is not that we're even women or that we're fighting for our territory, but we're fighting for a specific thing which is injustice I, I call it injustice or the right of people to exist and to have um the right to a certain lifestyle um and so forth so she i chose her um she's very strong in her position she's very uh outspoken she brings the issues to the table and she's admired by men and women across this territory the u.s and the british virgin Islands. and i thought she would be the ideal pick I reached out to her, um, she accepted, I was delighted. And so for um, our event on March 8th, uh, at Maria's, our guest speaker for International Women's Day is going to be uh, Senator Janelle Soro. Since announcing the event, it has garnered much support and is almost sold out. I wanted this event to be, like I said last year was the first one. Um, and I, I put it together in a matter of maybe a week or two, but it has always been something that has been on my mind from the moment I moved back home. So, but you know, the pace was fast working at the tourist board. Um, and then, you know, we had the hurricane and different things got in the way, but I did the first event last year, this year's event, um, as I said, I, I wanted to make it more inclusive and inviting and, you know, educational, informative, social and all those um, things in between music, art and all of that. And so we have poet April Glasgow. She's going to be presenting um, poetically, uh, which I'm really excited about that. We already we also have the Honorable Shireen Flax, who is going to be one of our um speakers and i'm also excited to hear her she has also been kind to sponsor the event as well we also have don Carell leonard uh, and she's a new face that continues to emerge uh, within this space and i'm looking forward to hearing her we have kendaki one of our local um musicians that will also be presenting and these are all females we also do have extreme band uh, which there aren't really females there, but I figure the females could have a good night uh, with them closing off for us. So I put a lot of thought into um, making this a very rounded event um, that could be enjoyed. And so there's some other elements when the ladies get there that they'll be able to enjoy. Um, but yes, unfortunately, I say unfortunately, it's fortunate and unfortunate. But once I released the flyer on Friday, the event was basically sold out in less than 24 hours. As I sit here with you, I have probably seven tickets remaining. Um, and so if you need a ticket, you can reach out to me. My number is 440-3234. Up next, a national epidemiologist has said that the COVID-19 pandemic has highlighted the impact of non-communicable diseases. Stay tuned. So you're saying I can ask this cat any question? The cat is connected to the computer. You just type in the question, it will read his mind. There's the answer, Cole. You're the man! I've been looking for this for weeks. You value traditions. To move in. You value music. You value education. Family. I love you. <laughs> service. Thank you. You're welcome. Love. Life. At Popular, we're committed to you and everything our community values. For the things you value the most, count on us. Popular. A show poised to help guide modern day men into 21st century distinguished gentlemen. It doesn't always involve suits and, uh, wait, bow ties. But raw, real life lessons that translate to grounded, community minded, well rounded men. 
This season, I'm taking you on an entirely different journey from chefs to dancers, philanthropists, communications specialists, and much more. I'm heading outside in the field to share the journey of some of the BBI's best and brightest men. From East End to West End, Bojangara, Justin Lake, not forgetting Annie Gara. Our Virgin Islands gentlemen are doing the damn thing, and I'm so proud. Get ready to reason, reflect, and redirect. We are the movers and shakers of this generation, and we ain't afraid to show it. The Art of a Distinguished Gentleman, Season 3, by yours truly, Ron Grant, raising a generation of greatness. Thanks for sticking with us. The national epidemiologist Harmony Messiah has said that COVID-19 pandemic has highlighted the impact that non-communicable diseases continue to have on persons across the globe and in the territory. She said this has resulted in the Ministry of Health ramping up their campaigns to spread awareness of the various NCDs and to promote the various measures residents can utilize to help control and minimize the chances of developing an NCD. The reason that we are tackling NCDs this year is because, well not just this year, but really driving it home is that COVID-19 really highlighted the impact that NCDs can have on your life. So we already know that approximately 80% of the Americas right, suffer from non-communicable diseases and the British Virgin Islands is no different. At least for the last decade, NCDs such as diabetes and hypertension and cancer has ranked in the top five okay of our killers so it is something that needs to be highlighted it is something that needs to be addressed because we know that having a chronic or non-communicable disease lead can lead to premature death disability and suffering all right so uh, Pat and I yeah, yeah. <laughs> when we sat down last year and we were kind of scrolling through you know the social media the comments and one of the things that kept coming all the time was what about chronic illnesses what about chronic diseases what are we doing doing about that and and to be quite frank the people are quite right this is a time right now that we really need to say enough is enough okay we want our population to be healthy we want our population not just to be healthy but to thrive and we need to start creating a community and an environment whereby our children can have a healthier life a healthy and sustainable future public health nutritionist patrice maduro said that more needs to be done in the territory to address the root causes of ncds she said this will help with preventing persons from developing NCDs since it has now escalated beyond unprecedented levels in the territory. We usually think about these things in terms of disease diagnosis and treatment. We need to start even before that. You know, what is the root cause or the driving forces that are causing NCDs in the first place? And we need to tackle it from that aspect as well because by the time you're diagnosed and treatment, you know you have done past so many phases where you could have um, done something to lower your risk and to prevent NCDs. So that's also what we are looking at as well, looking at, uh, you know, the areas of prevention. Where exactly can we um, tap into to actually lower the risk of NCDs as well? You know, when I was in high school, I graduated in 2000. And I could remember Dr. Potter and Ivy George talking back then about if we are not careful, NCDs is going to overtake the BVI. You know, we are already here, you know, and that was back way back in the early 2000s. We are so far in the belly of the beast now, we, it, we just can't turn around. You know, we have to strap on the, uh, the exhibition gears now and actually claw our way out of this, uh, of this um, situation of NCDs that we are facing in the BVI. So it's about teaching people and empowering them is like, uh, you know what, we need to actually do something, have preventative measures, whether it's in policies, regulation, guidance, whatever it is, because we need to get a handle of the non-communicable chronic diseases that we are seeing in the territory. Ms. Messiah also backed the claims made by the public health nutritionist 
adding that the situation is so bad in the territory that it has slowed the progression of the BVI in attaining its 2030 Sustainable Development Goal of reducing NCDs by one-third. She has hit the nail on the head. In 2010, when we had the global, you know, first high-level meeting to address chronic diseases, you know, a lot of the experts were saying if we are not cable, they were they were sounding the alarm from back then that if we are not careful, we're going to be sleepwalking into an unhealthy future, right? And the cries were ignored. So right now, we're not sleepwalking anymore. We have hopped, skipped, and stepped right our way in. right into this, all right? And so much so that we are off track to meeting that sustainable development goal of reducing NCDs for by one third by, for, by 20, 2025. Yeah. And now they push it back by 20, 2030 because less than half of the member states has any systems in place to actually deal with non-communicable diseases. And it's not like the solutions aren't there. They have been widely um, studied, widely documented. So we know what we need to do to kind of kind of kind of um pull it scale it back a little bit right and see how best we can get our population to where it needs to be to best tackle ncds in the bvi the national epidemiologist says it will take a hands-on approach by all entities including government and private organizations also in today's news now viewers, as 284 previously reported, Royal Caribbean and Norwegian Cruise Lines have loosened their onboard mask wearing policies. Now, Carnival has entered the ring with their own new, more relaxed protocols going forward. On Royal Caribbean Cruises, masks will be optional for fully vaccinated guests beginning on Friday. In addition, unvaccinated children are expected to continue wearing their masks indoors and in crowded settings. Guests under two years old do not have to wear a mask. Meanwhile, Norwegian Cruise Lines has announced that passengers will no longer be required to wear masks on board. According to the Norwegian website, effective fleet-wide on March 1, 2022, the decision to wear a mask covering when on board is at the discretion of each guest. Following the example of Royal Caribbean and Norwegian Carnival Cruise Lines said in a recent news release that as of March 1st, masks on board will be recommended but not required. However, certain venues and events where masks will be required. Financial news outlet The Street reports that Royal Caribbean has opted into the CDC's updated program, which requires that cruise ships sail with 95% vaccinated passengers and crew, with Carnival choosing to follow the same policy days apart when Royal Caribbean's decision takes effect on Friday. That's it for today's news roundup. Be sure to follow us for daily news updates at 284media.com and like us on Facebook at 284media and 284bvi on Instagram and Twitter. I'm Nia Douglas. I'll see you again tomorrow as we deliver your daily dose of local, regional, and international content. 284 News, your source for honest and impartial news right here on 284 Media. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Have a great evening. Brilliant Hands and Minds Tutoring Services. One-on-one -on -one tutorials in math and English. Intense homework assistance. Academic enrichment. School projects. Effective communication and public speaking development. Sign language for adults and children on Saturdays only. Registered with the Virgin Islands High School Certificate Program. Brilliant Hands and Minds can help you too. Offering intense curriculum-based training to help you or your loved ones get their high school diploma. It's time to make your family's education a number one priority. Hurry, space is limited. Brilliant Hands and Minds Learning Center. We are the trained education professionals. Live stream cable TV is here with CCT Live. Access over 80 channels that you can watch either at home or when you're on the go. And don't worry about missing your favorite series, sports, news, and local programming. Rewind and watch in your own time. Come to CCT today and ask about our one month free trial offer. CCT Live. Bring it home. The wait is over! CCT Fire is here! Experience ultra fast downloads, seamless streaming, and even more reliable connectivity on an all new Fire Blazing super fast CCT Fire network. CCT Fire. Bring it home and upgrade today.